when we're focusing on living by hope and living in peace and now living by faith, we thought that an apt way was to get to where people were really hurting. And we came up with the idea of some farming project. In fact, the idea actually came initially from a member of the community. They're always saying to us, why we don't plant callaloo and stuff like that. And then we approached the ministry and they were willing to lease us the land. We're seeing in terms of food security in many other countries, right? Farming not only taking place in traditional rural areas, but in cities. So you're seeing people planting on the top of skyscrapers, etc. With this situation with health, wherein our food must be our medicine and our medicine, our food. I think that um, greenhouse farming can help to rectify some of the ills that exist where health is concerned in this community. And a lot of times we don't remember that the city of Kingston is actually built on some of the most fertile soils in Jamaica. Because everything that washes out of the Blue Mountains, it ends up right there in the city of Kingston. Urban farming becomes an opportunity to put green spaces in, but also becomes an opportunity that as you are putting green spaces in, you are also providing entrepreneurial opportunities for the community members. Farming in the City, a project of the Jamaica Baptist Union Mission Agency. Jonestown, a community that spawned some of Jamaica's most talented sons and daughters, is hurting from urban decay and poverty. The unemployment rate is high in this part of Kingston, partly a reflection of the struggling Jamaican economy and partly because business owners are reluctant to employ residents of inner city communities. Compounding the problem is the lack of education and training opportunities for young people in distressed areas like this. The Baptist Church has a long and distinguished history of service to Jamaica, most notably in the vanguard of the abolitionist movement that agitated for an end to slavery in the West Indies. Established in 1911, the Jonestown Baptist Church has witnessed the transformation of the community from a thriving middle-class neighborhood to a political enclave defined by a history of violence and persistent poverty. The mission agency of the Jamaica Baptist Union provide economic assistance and social services to communities by helping those who have lost their livelihood, homes and property to acquire new skills and habitats. Jonestown, a place in need of socio-economic and spiritual intervention, was chosen as the location of an urban farming pilot project. Farming in the City is a joint venture between the Jonestown Baptist Church, her sister church Bethel Baptist, and the JBU Mission Agency. The project is funded by a grant from the Baptist World Alliance through Baptist World Aid. Farming in the City includes a 4,000 square foot greenhouse, which is operated by the Jonestown Baptist Church and five open field plots that are farmed by community members. The mission of the church is to share the good news. But sometimes it's difficult, I would say almost impossible, to share the good news of the gospel and the love of God to somebody who is hungry. So the church has to, in the mission field, not only share the gospel, but look at those needs. We have been in a ministry of partnering with persons. 
at every step of the way. Since this is what we have, we put it on the table and we sought others who could partner with us. So the Jamaica Baptist Union Mission Agency partnered with us and we started the Farming Inner the City project. Jonestown is an inner city community. Not much money <laughs> resides there. And the farm, with the full support of the Baptist Union, would produce vegetables, would produce other crops that could feed the people. And at farm gate prices, they would have these produce available to them. Well, Jonestown met a number of criteria for a pilot. I mean, there are many, many communities in Jamaica that have similar profiles. Jonestown was an urban community, a community whose citizens had been impacted by crime. In fact, the site on which the farm is located was a site where there used to be housing, but impacted by the criminal element, the houses were abandoned and destroyed, and here we had an opportunity to do something in that. Also, the community is affected by poverty and unemployment. Many people in, in those communities couldn't find employment elsewhere. Two teams of highly specialized professionals consulted on the project. Central Greenhouse Supplies and Services built the greenhouse enclosure and water harvesting system, while EM2P designed a solar-powered IT system to monitor the greenhouse environment and automatically deliver water to the plants. This urban farming pilot project is designed to refine and develop high-tech greenhouse best practices. The lessons learned from the pilot will form a database of resources for both urban and rural farmers in Jamaica. Solar power for the project directly benefits community members who are able to charge their cell phones for free via the 12-port USB charging station. The University of the West Indies Department of Physics facilitated the design of the solar power automated monitoring and water delivery systems. The greenhouse technology, um, for us that had an interest because we have a strong climate studies group within the Department of Physics and the greenhouse technology is seen as one of these adaptation mechanisms for climate change. Um, but the greenhouse technology can be enhanced in the sense that if you have what we call remote monitoring facilities and particularly in this kind of context which is an urban greenhouse context we, we felt that that was right up the alley of the Department of Physics and then of course there was a challenge of how they would get power to the greenhouse um, in this urban context. The solar um, solution encompasses solar panels, charge controller, battery backup system and the charging station we have is a battery system that we plan to implement where the users of the farm will be able to easily remove a set of batteries from the charging station, bring them to the farm, attach them to the remote system, continuous to power the remote system without requiring external power and we'll always have a backup set of batteries to um, immediately switch out in, term, in times when they are, the batteries are dying. So what we pretty much are installing is really uh, electronic valve which turn on and off the pipe um, sensors to tell us how saturated the soil is including in it some controls to allow for remote monitoring and access that you can monitor from your phone from wherever in the world you are as long as you have internet access we wanted to design a system that um, was modular and scalable so you could add components and you could scale if you want someone to be able to run a small potted, potted garden if they want to or to someone to say, okay, look, I'm running a small farm and I'm running several small farms and you could implement our solution and reliably understand the conditions that are going on. The idea behind the project was to bring technological farming to the city. And uh, the type of farming that we do here was pretty conducive for the project, which is greenhouse farming, our protective structures, agriculture. Uh, this will be, in some sense, the pilot for this type of thing and what we're trying to create is a um, a type of automated greenhouse management that is affordable and robust 
and can be replicated in Jamaica and in the Caribbean. We introduce to them uh, aspects of water harvesting and water storage. We also introduce to them, you know, uh, proper nutrition for the, for the crop, all of the pest, pest management. So it was, a, it was actually a, a blanket approach. Um, we use the drip irrigation and the water is harvested from rainfall. It is set up to go into the gutters, straight into the tanks. And that's basically what we use for now. And it's a set type of technology that um, the National Irrigation Commission and the RADA group is encouraging all farmers to use right now. For example, what you have in the shop behind me is a hydroponic system. This is clean agriculture, you know? And uh, this is an agriculture that, 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 that brings into focus that you really don't need to have several hundred acres of land for you to be actively involved in agriculture. We do sweet peppers, tomatoes, and pak choys. That's what we do mostly. We have sweet peppers and um, pak choys planted now. As the Bible says in the book of the prophet Isaiah, that the desert blooms, that in the midst of this dry and parched land, as it was, because don't forget, you know, it was originally housing land. And we have shown that dry and parched land can be developed into something about which a community can be proud. We lease the land. Um, we divided the place in lots. And initially we had about six or seven farmers. What we did, they got the lots. We gave them startup capital in the sense that we purchased seeds. We did all of that. They were just to farm the lot. It was a self-employed venture and they sold the things and that became income for them. Well, I work every other week, two days, but the farming, I'm in the farm every day, morning and evening, except Sunday, because I go to church on Sunday. So I'm here every day because the farming becomes a part of me, you know, so I enjoy being here. You are a member of the Johnson Baptist Church? No, not at all. No? No. So how you became involved with the project? It, eventually, my husband was the one that they asked to help with the fencing. So after the fencing finished, they asked him if he wanted a piece of the lot. The greenhouse part of the project is where the church manages and we now employ persons. So persons have been employed at different stages. When we need the place to be bush, we employ persons. When we needed um, to, to get things prepared, persons were employed. But we now have two full-time persons and staff. And when we need additional labor, then we employ persons. So people are being employed because of the project we have there. When I was in Old Harbor, I used to support supermarket. A supermarket in um, Papini and Parkview. I used to supply them with stuff. But now I just, true, so I don't have plenty of product. I just like sell housewife around this area and I went to the market with the address I have. What made you decide to come to Kingston to farm? And while I was on my way going to the market, one Friday morning, Friday night going to Saturday morning, I was attacked and get robbed and shot by a gunman. But I decided that farming is my hobby because I was growing up in St. Elizabeth and I'm a, that there was a bread basket parish and I, all my life I knew it was just to do farming. And it's my hobby, it's my priority. I love to do farming and I guess I will do it for the rest of my life. Our number one challenge is the water, the problem with water that we have. Because um, we are not supplied with water from the National Water Commission. Um, the farmers and Myself have to get water from the pipes around the community. We have tanks erected, but if we don't get enough rainfall, they cannot be filled, so they are not in use right now. I am a member of the Bethel Baptist Church. I advise on nutrition, on the type of um, seeds that we ought to, to get. I advise on pesticides, fungicides, and water conditions. Farming in Addis City is a win-win for the residents of the Greater Jonestown area. Community members are learning new skills. Some are earning a nominal living from farming, and the community has regular access to fresh, inexpensive vegetables. 
The Jonestown Baptist Church benefits from the proceeds of the greenhouse, which supplements its feeding program and helps to finance some of its other outreach projects. We look after the things on Saturday. We reap on Saturday, pay out, and then on Sunday, somebody take it to market for me. Well, generally, they see it good, you know, because they support us. Yes, they will come on a Sunday and buy because, you know, they want the color love for their breakfast on Sundays. You know, I'm a vegan. God don't eat flesh. You are an animal flesh, per se. And I eat a lot of green vegetables and uh, because it's good for the blood. So for the past um, two years or so, I've been eating pop chai and kalalo in particular from that farm. So it has assisted my health and my diet in a significant way. Adjoining the farm, we saw banana shoots going up. We saw gungu trees going up. So the farm in Johnstown was a source of inspiration. Inspiring residents who were not a part directly involved in the farm to do likewise. Agriculture now needs to be embraced by the masses of the country as the task that we have to feed the country is actually of, of, of national importance. And I have seen where it is not only the responsibilities of farmers now that need to look out for aspects re relating to food safety and food security. This now has to be the approach of every single individual on the island. The fundamental reason why we're driven to do this, you know, is that we recognize that there needed to be change. There needed to be a light shone in the darkness. There needed, people needed to see that there were possibilities. And so this may be a catalyst from not, maybe not another family city project, but other projects that can transform the community. So this is what is important, and we hope that in a small way, farming the city would have helped to do that. Farming is not easy. It's very hard, but it's rewarding when you see your crops and how they look and how they turn out and when people buy them and they're pleased. 